Hi everyone, my name's Lou Sims and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'd love it if you hit subscribe, the notifications buttons and follow me on my creative journey. Today I'm going to be printing on a large jelly plate using oxide inks. I'm going to stick to three main colours to create my background. I'm going to put the colours down in bands and then using a brayer, I'm actually then going to soften the actual colours. In between doing each brayering, I do clean the brayer. And the reason for that is I actually want to keep the colours distinctive as they are. And if I clean my brayer, I don't get too much blending until I actually want to do the blending. Once I've got the background down, I'm going to be taking some of the stamps I designed for personal impressions to act as textures. These will subtly add layer upon layer um, and you can do this with your oxide inks. So the first layer I've created is just using the colours and one of the stamp designs. Once that's finished, I'm going to take another one of the stamps and using the same colour, Abandoned Coral, I'm going to gradually build up the layers on the background so it looks subtle and, um, you know, it's working in. On my scrap piece of card beside me, I'm actually making sure I take off all the excess ink because I will be using that. So slowly I'm going to add each of the layers on until I'm happy that I've got the print that I want. Once I'm happy, I'm actually now going to take that print and turn it into three different cards. We've all got a terrible habit of storing our backgrounds and I am dreadful for that too. And I'm getting really, you know, I'm actually pushing myself to use the backgrounds and not just keep them. So I'm cutting up this one A4 sheet and I'm going to make a DL card. I'm going to make a square five by, well, I think it's actually five and a half by five and a half. And I'm going to also make an A6, but make it landscape. So cutting up the backgrounds to fit on my base layers of the cards and gluing them all in place. Once I'm happy with those, I'm going to create some extra backgrounds, but by using the same stamps, but actually using them as stamps um, so I can create some embellishment pieces. Now I'm doing dots of glue on the backgrounds, not because dots of glues work better, but because actually my glue is getting to the end and I want to get every last little bit of it out. Uh, there's no other magic trick other than that. Now, using um, a selection of the same stamps and one or two other textural stamps from Personal Impressions, I'm going to create some of the additional backgrounds I want to use to create these cards. So I'm going to stick to the same colour family, but maybe bring in one or two others. So I'm going to use the new Lumberjack um, Distress, but I'm going to use it mixed this time with a Distress ink rather than um, an oxide, so I can get the translucent effect as well as the oxide effect. Slowly but surely, I'm just going through, looking at the stamps I've got and what will make perfect embellishments for me to cut out. What will create perfect embellishments or even, you know, create different backgrounds. Spritzing your stamps, because obviously there's still a lot of ink left on there, and I'm now going to stamp onto my mop-up sheet because that can either become another background or it can become embellishments. I'm just going to keep going and creating a mix of lots of different things so I can work out, you know, I have, you know, plentiful supply of all the different embellishments I want to use when thinking of the card designs. I've already worked in my head that some of the different things I want to do um, and I want to bring die cutting in because I think sometimes we don't actually do that often enough with some of our backgrounds and bring in our um, other card making skills.
So now I've got all my bits together and I've got a nice selection of prints. I'm going to die cut some of them out, but then I'm also going to actually um, use them to create um, embellishments in their own right. So the first card I'm going to make is I thought it would be rather nice to make a non-traditional Christmas card and use the colours that I've done for the background and bring in one or two others as well that I think will complement with it. So it's now taking all those die cut elements and actually my favourite part faffing and putting them in the places I actually want to put them. I am going to fast forward parts um, where you can see what I'm doing because I don't think it really needs description but I just cut out all the different elements you know that I think will enhance that card as and when um, rather than just cut everything out and then just storing it in a pot and never using it again. So that's the first card finished and I think it came out rather well. Now for the second card I'm taking one of those stamped backgrounds that I did and I want to create some panels and I've cut them down to um, an inch and a half and then I'm going to put them onto um, a matte layer which matches my um, background. Once all the panels are stuck down and put in place, it's going to be then looking again at all those different stamp sheets that I did and working out what embellishments or, you know, working out what I'm going to cut out to make embellishments.
I'm going to use a mixture of 3D foam to layer up my embellishments and silicon glue. Um, the silicon glue will work wonders and work a lot better on some of the, um, the layers that I have got and, and also give a little bit of depth as well. So for my second card, I've got all the embellishments in place and I decided as a finishing touch, a few little um, punched hearts would look good. And it also tied in with the um, blue that I've actually used on. And then I'm going to finish by actually adding some gems. So that's my second card and I've made it a DL size card and I love actually the pops of the panels. I think it really sets off the embellishments. For my final card, this is an A6 landscape card. And I'm going to keep this one um, equally as simple and I'm just cutting up the beautiful script background and I'm going to make um, a pennant, a banner. And that is going to be then where I place all my other embellishments. So all three cards are using the same sort of embellishments, but I'm hoping they each have a different look about them. As before, I'm just going to pick different pieces that I think will add to my actual design. Um, and, and I know it looks that, you know, why didn't I just cut everything out in one go? But I just find for my creative process, if I just cut as and when I need things, I'm not so overwhelmed um, by having lots of different elements in front of me that I spend more time flicking through those and actually making. So my final card has been done and I finished it off with a few of those little um, stamped butterflies, which I took from my mop up sheet. So each three cards have been made or the backgrounds have been created just from that one A4 printed background that we did at the very beginning of the video. Thank you ever so much for visiting today. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I've taken a jelly print with oxides and created three beautiful cards. Until next time, take care and I'll see you soon.